Roswell Flight Test Crew here at Commercial UAV Expo 2024 in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. And I'm here with Dennis Krause over at the Angel Aerial Systems booth. How you doing, Dennis? Wonderful, Patrick. Great. Now, I was walking the show floor here, and, and you guys have an aircraft that is literally like nothing I've ever seen. Why don't you tell the people at home about it? Yeah, so this is our windmilling drone. Uh, we call it the TRIO. Uh, you'll see it has a central hub with three wings and a propeller on the end of each wing. Uh, it takes off like a normal quadcopter, vertical takeoff and landing, but once it gets in the air, it starts windmilling like a giant propeller. And uh, what we're doing there is essentially those wings, the big wings on it, are now helping to generate lift, which makes it a lot more efficient from an aerodynamics perspective. And we're able to lessen the power draw on the battery pretty significantly uh, to the point that it allows us to have two hours of flight time. Wow. For a small rotorcraft powered by batteries, two hours is like a real breakthrough. What's your use case for this platform? Yeah, so we're primarily looking at public safety, so police departments, fire departments, search and rescue. Um, those are really critical missions, so uh, you could um, you know, risk your mission if you have to take the drone down to change the batteries. A lot of times what they're doing as a workaround is they're bringing multiple drones, multiple pilots out and kind of playing hot potato between drones to keep eyes on the scene at all times, um, which works but is uh, very inefficient. You're adding costs because you're having to have multiple units. Um, and a lot of these uh, departments are also very stressed with manpower and number of pilots. So if you can achieve the mission with one drone, uninterrupted, uh, that's a really big benefit. Now, because this aircraft is sort of so fundamentally different from anything else in the rotorcraft space, is it different to fly? I mean, when it changes over from, you know, semi-normal, you know, multi-rotor drone to this crazy windmill thing, do your flight controls change radically? No, not at all. And, and that's been really, really important to our design is making this simple, intuitive, familiar, uh, so your controls are going to feel very similar to a quadcopter. The transition from multi-rotor to windmill is the push of a button and then it's all the back-end software does the heavy lifting. So um, the controls itself uh, on the drone, each of the wings individually articulates and it's meant to mimic the swashblade of a helicopter. Um, so you have full maneuverability just like you would in a helicopter, but you control it kind of the ease of use the same way you would a quadcopter. So just a normal two-stick mode two controller. Exactly, yep. Now what sort of payload or payloads does it carry? Yeah, so uh, our initial drone is just gonna have one payload option. You know, we'd love to develop and evolve that over time, I'm sure, but the payload we're starting off with is a dual optical and thermal uh, payload. So it's got uh, up to 40X optical zoom and then 640 by 480 thermal as well. That's fantastic. When is this thing gonna sort of get out there in the wild? When can people buy it? And uh, here's where the shirt collar tightens a little bit. How much is it gonna cost? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we're about a year away from launching commercially. Um, like every new product, we gotta go through our, our testing cycles. And it's really important to us that we're launching a product that is trusted and reliable uh, because it is being used for real critical missions. And so um, our next few months, we're gonna go through our first round of field testing with some of our development partners. We're based out of Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, and we are partnering with some Midwest uh, police and fire who are gonna test this in the field. And then of course, we'll get the feedback, make the improvements. We need to uh, expand to a beta test round early next year. Uh, and then hopefully from that, learn what we need to to get this uh, fully commercial ready. Uh, the list price when we first come out is uh, $50,000 for it. And that is an all-in price. So that includes the camera, uh, the case, the controller, the spare batteries, uh, et cetera. So we're not trying to add um, you know, subscription or additional fees or here's the drone, but you also have to buy the camera. It's all in one package. Great. And then one other question is, because this is an issue in law enforcement and those sorts of segments, uh, what's your sort of intellectual property? Is this going to be a blue UAS or otherwise accessible for people who have restrictions on where their hardware comes from? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it's all made and assembled in Cincinnati, Ohio, where uh, we're based out of. Uh, it's all NDA compliant components. Um, so we are not on the blue UAS list today, but it's designed with the intent that uh, it can be, uh, and we, we intend to pursue that. Um, 
And so from that perspective, you know, there shouldn't be restrictions, uh, especially for US users and so forth. Um, and a lot of our uh, intellectual property um, you know, is, is based on some of the own innovations that we've put inside of it. A lot of it's around the control of the wings and how we're doing that. Um, uh, with the individual articulation, uh, but yeah, for for the user perspective, um, you know, it's a, a made in USA product that's NDA compliant. Perfect. Well, I I just want to personally say thank you to you and your team because you know, the last several years, I think the drone industry has gotten kind of stagnant. It's a quadcopter with a thermal camera, with two thermal cameras, but. Honestly, who cares? But you guys are bringing us something fundamentally new and that, that just warms my heart. So thank you so much for that. Yeah, thank you. No, we, we appreciate it. Um, Will Hastings and I uh, were the two co-founders of the company. Um, we actually are not from the drone industry. We're from more traditional aviation. We grew up in uh, GE Aviation working on jet engines. Um, and you know, when we first started looking at this industry, uh, Drones have been an amazing tool for public safety um, and really brought tremendous benefits. But the one thing that we noticed is um, just kind of this persistent feedback of flight endurance is is king and we can't get enough of it and, and it is a problem. And so, you know, we were trying to bring an outsider perspective, uh, drive some innovation um, and hopefully make people look at uh, potential for airframes and what they look like a little differently. Well, no, and I, I think you hit the maybe the nail on the head there, maybe your secret formula, is you guys haven't been in this industry from day one, so you don't get locked into those same patterns of thinking as the rest of us. Anyway, Dennis, thank you so very much. Thank you, Patrick. It's been a pleasure. All right, and from Commercial UAV Expo 2024 in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada, this is the Roswell Flight Desk Crew, signing off. Mm -hmm.